Senator, we're going to go to the phones right now. And, okay, uh, but could I continue just a little bit and explain? Sure, absolutely. Go ahead, go ahead. Because I was befriended and I was very close to the Jewish community because in my opposition to the Vietnam War, the largest single community was the Jewish community, uh, the intellectual community in opposing the Vietnam War. So it was easy for me to gravitate towards support of Israel. I still support Israel. In fact, anybody who truly supports Israel has to be opposed to the Israeli government policies that have started from the get-go in trying to liquidate Palestinian interests and take their land. And if you really want to support Israel, you have to support a two-state solution. And that's not what is being pursued by the Israeli government today. And so, and I parted company with them when uh, Sadat came on the scene, when we had an opportunity to really bring about a peaceful solution, and when many of us realized that the hawkish elements, the Likud party and now the Kadima party have really risen to the forward. And now with this election that we see, which essentially the invasion of Gaza was to really juice up the fear elements for this election, which is now going to elect apparently Netanyahu, which is the worst of the worst as far as Israeli leaders are concerned. He's on the level with the Sharon. But mm-hmm. maybe you want to open up the questions now to your callers. James from California. Thanks for taking my call, Mark. Another great show. I'm very glad that we were able to get Senator Mike Ravel on the program for you. Senator, I had a couple of questions. I saw two excellent programs that you were recently interviewed in association with. The first one was Tina Richards, Outside the Box. She's a good friend of mine as well. It was an earlier broadcast and it repeated yesterday, actually. And also uh, on America Dream, you were talking about this Afghan quagmire yesterday. You can go to PressTV.com and look up the program archive to see those. And you had basically had a discussion in the the American Dream broadcast with Jonathan Landay, who had written for McClatchy about the manipulation of intelligence in the run-up to the Iraq quagmire. And it was very, very concerning because he was saying, if we pull out of Afghanistan, which I believe in like you did and what you were proposing, uh, what's going to happen in Pakistan? He was saying there's basically an insurgency that's going from the border of Iran and Afghanistan all the way to Pakistan, and it's very close to Peshawar in Pakistan now. And the worry is, if Pakistan implodes, they're a nuclear-armed nation. Now, my argument with this is that we went into Afghanistan, actually told General Jones, who's the national security advisor for President Obama now, that the main reason we went into Afghanistan was because of 9-11, of course, and the reason 9-11 happened is because of our support for Israel. You can look up James Banford's Pretext for War book and look up Israel as a terrorist motivation and index, and you'll see it's straightforward. And so we've got this quagmire on our hands. I think Mark had mentioned it also. It goes back to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and that's for sure. Uh, What are we going to do? Is there going to, you know, is Pakistan going to implode, and are are we going to be basically putting in another draft to deal with that. Um, I've got a couple other questions, too. I'll be quick. Um, well, hang, hang, hang on. Let me answer the first one. Sure. Uh, first, your analysis is totally accurate, and I don't buy into that. I think we've got to get out of uh, Afghanistan. Let them go back to what they had before. They don't need us to tell them how to run their society or their government, and we can't do it. We just can't do it. We don't know enough about them, and we don't have the money to do it. Secondly, with respect to this projected implosion of Pakistan, well, the American leadership keeps telling us, oh, that the Pakistan's going to implode. That's a great statement. That means that we've got to spend, as uh, Biden put forth, a $12 billion giving them aid. Look at Pakistan's been around a long time. Uh, if the is going to implode in the military, is quite substantial. In fact, the joke is uh, this is the only military in the world that has a country. If they're going to implode, that means that their military is so incompetent they can't defend themselves from internal insurrection. If that's the case, then there's nothing we can do about it, and we certainly aren't going to go invade them. When they raised the oh, because they got nuclear, we've got it, they, they're a special case. Well, we've got nukes all over the world, and uh, we're the ones that foster these nukes all over the world, whether we choose to recognize that or not. The nuclear problem is a separate problem not just involving Pakistan, but a whole host of countries involving Israel and Pakistan and India and the five members of the Security Council. And so we should deal with that separately and not try to keep laying it on Pakistan. And so we should get out of Afghanistan. We should neutralize our activities with Pakistan and let them deal with their own problems. 
Sir, we, I, I agree with that. I, I completely agree, and it's just an utter quagmire. Even Phil Turney, my good friend, is a co-host of Liberty Hour today, and he really moved me with his memorial for uh, Commander Golden. My James, uh, James, we got a lot of... Oh, yeah, no, no, no worries. Let me just touch on this other point quickly. Senator Gravel is also working on another couple of issues, uh, a 9-11 commission in New York, and he's also got uh, an issue with direct democracy. He's got a book out called Citizen Power. You can go to Citizen... Oh, yeah. Power. Go for it. I want to <laughs> make sure you had a chance to touch on that. Lastly, um, we talked about a two-state solution. Don't you think time is running out on that with the continued land grab in the West Bank and the building of the apartheid wall? And if you look at the population of Israel now, they're supporting Netanyahu, as you'd mentioned earlier, in the polls. And if they're doing that, they're hardly in support of peace with the Palestinians if they can support a man like that. And I'll leave you with this. You can go to neoconzionistthreat.com and you can look up the What Motivated the 9-11 Hijackers YouTube there. It'll clearly convey how our continued support of Israel not only was a primary motivation for the tragic 9-11 attack, but also the earlier attack on the World Trade Center in 1993. And thank you for coming on the show again, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Let me just add that he's entirely right. Two-state solution, that is the only solution. I don't care if they adopt it now or 100 years from now. That is the only solution, period. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and check out Tom's Representative Press channel. It's a channel you'll want to subscribe to as well. See the link in the video description.